everyone, I'm Beth Benanacola from Dare to Begin Life Coaching and I've got my beautiful niece, hello Joanna Panayi. <laughs> Panayi. I am so happy that you guys are joining us today. I really appreciate every everyone who supports this group. Yeah. Now, today we're looking at altruism, which is compassionate giving. And um, Joanna, this is really close to my heart because I think if you were to strip every religion, every spiritual person down, I think at the core of everyone is one thing, spiritual, like um, compassionate giving. And that's what we're talking about today. And that's why I am so excited. Yeah. Yes. And so, yeah, it's about going beyond the ego. So it's about people connecting. Ah, how lovely. Making the world one. All. No matter what part of the country, a part of the you know world you're from, no matter what Colour, religion, your religion your your everything. Language, it's about becoming one. It's getting rid of the, as we say in Greek, ego, which Your means ego. me, ego in English. Everything is about me. Yes. My money, my stuff. Exactly. There you my are, My promotion, my, and not about what the general. Love it. The good for the So we're going people. beyond the me, mm. ego in Greek. Mm. Yes, yeah. go. Um, so we're looking, compassionate giving is like, I, I translate it as altruism, being altruistic, giving, giving, unconditional love. Just giving because you've got this love inside of you yeah. and you need to share yeah. it. You love it, love it, love it. Can you imagine like if we lived in the ideal world where... Um, we were able to give to others and we were able we were able to to expand ourselves through giving we were able to give and through giving we would be getting so much love back and can you imagine that reality that's the dream that that freedom bring it on free yeah. work Bring it on. Now, there is one step, Joanna, that, that it's like an obstacle, I think, between us being able to um, get to that dream. And do you know what it is? Our ego. Something else? Yes, it is the ego. But what have we bought into? Uh, we've bought into the trap of... Well, what feeds our ego mm -hmm. is consumerism. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Consumerism. How great we are. Oh, lovely, lovely. Love it. Now, I believe that what is our obstacle um, that, that's separating us from getting um, connected with people, bonding with people, is our ego and consumerism and the self-centeredness, the greed of wanting more. Why do we keep wanting more? Um, because basically, I, I believe that society, um, these big corporations have made us believe that it's every man for himself. Buy, buy this car and you will be happy. Buy this house and, and you'll be more respected. Um, buy these clothes and you will be loved, you know, you will, you will look good, you will, yeah. And that has us comparing with our next door neighbour, uh -huh. who has the lesser model. Oh. So it, it has us in a competition. Right, the green-eyed monster, which makes, uh, the jealousy. Our, which makes our, our neighbour envious of us. And can you have a relationship, can you have a connection like that? No. No, Josie. It's no. all about winning. And it's all about me, me, me. Because when I'm looking at 
the other person. I'm looking at, I'm, I'm doing a calculation if I'm better and what else should I do to be better. Yeah. So how can I extend love? Well, I will tell you that. Can I tell you a true story? <laughs> this is a true story, Jo. Um, just before we go on to my personal experience, because you are, um, <laughs> well, I don't know if you are, yeah. <laughs> I'll play the video back to make sure because I don't remember. I think. Yeah, but I'll, I'll tell you about my ego and my story. Uh -huh. But before I do that, um, we talked about the connection with our neighbours and us acquiring more to look better than them but the thing is by acquiring more we're hoarding we're <laughs> we're filling up our wardrobe we're working more hours to afford to have those clothes or those whatever um, we're buying more expensive uh, car so we're not spending time with our children or with our loved ones so we can have more look better than our neighbors and does that make us happy at the end of the day Definitely not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Debt and fear of loss, because somebody might come and steal what we've got. True it's story. Just the constant anxiety. Thank you. And thank you. what you achieve is doesn't have a foundation. It uh -huh. could be taken like that. Mm -hmm. So you've not accomplished anything. No. Zilch. So, we, I think we'll go back to the ego and um, what how it all started, you said, for, for what it's about. Okay, I believe, I personally believe we're both educators, we're both teachers. Um, Joanna teaches at a high school. I teach, um, I've got an institute. I believe it's an education. It's the way that we're educated. Now, as a young, as a, as a child, I was an underachiever, okay? So I was always not enough. What made you feel not enough? Um, I couldn't understand the education system. I couldn't learn the way other children were learning. I found it difficult to um, to get grades. I found it difficult to learn. Do you have any idea why? I haven't been diagnosed as yet, but I I know I've got dyslexia and ADHD, hundred percent. So that makes it the educational system's fault, and not yours right. for not being able to follow it. Follow it. True story. The educational system made you feel less mm -hmm. when it was not capable of catering for your needs. For my needs. Mm. Very so, sad. Very true. Right. Um, now, so that made me feel insecure, and I found my worth out of buying Vogue magazine, following consumerism, buying, so I looked good in order to feel good. And of course, big corporations, whatever, Vogue, whatever, I bought into the system of every man for himself, so if I looked good, I was seen, and I felt I was somebody, mm -hmm. right? So, I managed to cover my insecurity by hoarding clothes, getting into debt, whatever. And overworking. And overworking. And never saying that's enough, just yes, always going for it. Now, I was lucky enough to um, have an older sister, your auntie, my sister, my your, your, no, my, my um, your, uh, your, um, my sister who's passed away, Katie. Yeah. You met Katie, didn't yes. you? Yeah. I was lucky to have a guiding light from Katie because what she did is she saw that I was um, covering my insecurities through consumerism. Really? And she realized, she realized that and she saw my underachievement and it was through her that she showed me how to study. Hmm. She showed me how to learn. She showed me how to get into university and do very well. How to get a really, and to become a teacher and to study psychology after that and to become the person that I am now. And it was through that education, the way that my sister taught me, I was able 
to become a teacher and show empathy and to com that word we said before, ultra to be an altruistic teacher, mm. to give without expecting back mm. to my students so they could learn. Mm. And, and, and that's where I'm at now. I got away from consumerism. I got stuck into my vulnerabilities, stuck into the real depths of the negative aspects of me. And I was able to use those vulnerabilities to be able to work as a teacher and help those vulnerable children who have ADHD, who have dyslexia, who have other learning disabilities, dyspraxia, whatever. And so I could be a guiding light for them as my sister was to me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, we should stand up against consumerism, against the norm, and stop buying into channeling our money from our pockets to their pockets, our money, our energy, our whole psyche. Yep. Was that? Yep. And stop envying the, our neighbours. Stop. Stop envying people that divide us. It's not a competition. It's an embrace. It's to dance with everyone. Can you imagine if your vulnerabilities were a, were a bridge to bringing people closer to you? Because that's what I've used, my it vulnerability. Does work that way, yeah. Everyone's got vulnerability. Yeah. And communicating them becomes a strength. Oh, how beautiful. We should stop being groomed by consumerism, by big corporations. We should stop this um, getting on the internet, wanting to buy, buy, buy. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to be validated by the internet or by yeah we're already we're already whole mm -hmm. and true satisfaction comes with connecting with others yeah totally and true you can immediately feel it the satisfaction and well-being when yeah. you come close with others oh how cute now i'm going to tell you about a quote i'm going to tell you a quote by martin luther king jr um, and I find this really beautiful because he wasn't subjected to society even though they were trying to kill him. Mm. They were trying to kill him because he was not listening to their bullshit. And what Martin Luther King said is, I would rather, I would rather die, mm. I would rather die than hate you. I would rather die than hate you. Wow. And so he wasn't buying into them, and he was true to himself with his legacy, and even though the very next day they killed him, the very next day, and he lived his truth, he died even though, but his legacy, just like Katie's legacy, as a guiding light shone on. Isn't it wow. beautiful? I would rather die than hate you. Yeah. It's so pure and kind of... Yeah. It's about shifting our perspective into consumerism, into being altruistic, and instead of fearing growth, just just challenging our, our insecurity. We are the creator of our destiny. Yeah. And um, consumerism only breeds, breeds self-centeredness. It only, it, you know, but if we were to shift that perspective into looking at our vulnerability as untapped potential, I have used my vulnerability as an underachiever to go into the thing that I am. I was afraid of education. Mm. And I've used that as a pivotal force to be able to educate those children that feel 
vulnerable. We get rid of the subliminal messages that they're giving us. We get rid of consumerism. We reject the greed. We reject ourselves and we focus on servicing others instead of ourselves. That's where true joy and the meaning of life just Oh yeah, blossom. And it's about a collective focus, a collectiveness. Collectiveness, not an individualism. Yes. Like consumerism just. Yeah. A greater right. good. Yeah. A greater good. It goes into a greater good. Um we grow from compassion, compassionate giving. We grow through compassionate giving and love. Mm. Now, yes, that's any comments, you guys. I don't know who's watching us. Luga. Oh, thank you, Lou. God bless Katie. Thank you, Luga. Um, that's my cousin, Luke. And George. Hello, George. Hello, twin brother. And Luke as well. I love you guys. Um, yes. And so that's the end of our live. Um, you guys, if you want more of what we have talked about today, you can join, um, you can look at the website, that's been in the com, and you can find some really lovely um, um, podcasts, yeah, mm. similar to this, mm. and, um, and um, YouTube as well, Dare to Begin Life Coaching. And remember, you guys, to live your lives, man. Let's do it. Let's start living our lives as a collective um, body, as a collective consciousness. Mm. And start giving. Mm. It's not about the self. No. It's not about the giving ego love and, and Greek. Come back. It's, it's not about the ego, the no. Greek word for ego. No. Ego means me. Mm. Thank you. Joanna Banayi okay. for joining okay. us okay. today. Okay. We really appreciated you. Mm, very enjoyable. Thank you. Mm. And love okay. you guys a lot. Peace, love and rainbows. From Dare to Begin Life Coaching. Mm. We love you. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>